Before we start, let us first have an overview, of what we will be discussing for the next two hours. This will be our roadmap for this session's discussion. First, we will be defining what biochemistry is, its objective, and scope. Secondly, we will look into the importance of biochemistry, especially in the context of your study of medicine. Meaning why is it important for you to study it at your stage? Next, is we will review the chemical components of the cells, atoms, molecules, and molecular bonds. We have to go down to the molecular level, in order to fully understand how atoms can come together, to form molecules and molecules to macromolecules, and so on and so forth. Fourthly, we all know that water is a crucial part of all biological systems. So we will be spending some time reviewing the physical and chemical properties of water. Next, is we have to see how the pioneers in biochemistry, were able to study the different biochemical structures and functions of organelles. Thus, it is only prudent that we revisit subcellular fractionation as an important tool in separating, and isolating the different subcellular organelles. Following this will be a brief overview of the different macromolecules, that you will be encountering in the course of your study of biochemistry. And lastly, we will be familiarizing ourselves, with a very important biochemical principle that puts sense in everything, regarding biochemical pathways. This is the concept of compartmentalization, the cellular localization of both molecules and processes. Okay, I guess we are all ready. So dear students, sit back, strap on your seatbelts, and we will lift off to start your journey to the wonderful world of medical biochemistry. Biochemistry, can be defined as the science of the chemical basis of life. It came from the Greek word, bios, meaning life. The cell is the structural unit of living systems. Thus, biochemistry, can also be described as the science of the chemical constituents, of living cells and of the reactions and processes they undergo. This is what is commonly referred to as metabolism. By this definition, biochemistry encompasses large areas of cell biology, molecular biology, and molecular genetics. The objective of biochemistry is the complete understanding at the molecular level, of all of the chemical processes associated with living cells. Biochemistry and molecular biology, represent the study of the structures and processes that form the foundation for all living matter. They draw on techniques from biology, chemistry, and physics, providing a key interface between these fields. Biochemists and molecular biologists investigate all forms of life, such as viruses, bacteria, yeast, fungi, plants, and animals. Much of this research examines life at the cellular and subcellular levels. To order to achieve this objective, biochemistry involves the isolation of molecules found in the cells. Then determine these molecules' different processes and analyze the functions of these processes. The scope of biochemistry is diverse and has been proven to be essential to the or crucial life sciences as well. The biochemistry of the nucleic acids lies at the heart of genetics. In turn, the use of genetic approaches has been critical for elucidating many areas of biochemistry. Physiology, which is the study of body function, overlaps with biochemistry almost completely. Immunology employs numerous biochemical techniques, and many immunologic approaches have found wide use by biochemists. Pharmacology and pharmacy, rest on a sound knowledge of biochemistry and physiology. In particular, most drugs are metabolized by enzyme-catalyzed reactions. Poisons act on biochemical reactions or processes. This is the subject matter of toxicology. Biochemical approaches, likewise, are being used increasingly to study basic aspects of pathology, such as inflammation, cell injury, and cancer. Many workers in microbiology, zoology, and botany, employ biochemical approaches almost exclusively. These relationships are not surprising, because life as we know it depends on biochemical reactions and processes. According to the World Health Organization, health is defined as a state of not merely the absence of disease and infirmity but in a more holistic way. It is defined in a positive way as a state of complete physical, mental, social, and even spiritual well-being. From a strictly biochemical viewpoint, health may be considered that situation, in which all of the many thousands of intra- and extracellular reactions that occur in the body, are proceeding at rates commensurate with the organism's maximal survival, in the physiologic state. Thus, simply stated, health, from a biochemical standpoint, simply means that all molecules needed for the optimal functioning of the body, exist in their appropriate amounts, and all the processes they undergo, are occurring in the most harmonious balance. In the same vein, we can now define disease, biochemically, as a state wherein there are abnormalities in the biomolecules, 
either in quality or quantity, and or the different reactions and processes, they undergo and participate in. With this in mind, when we look at diseases, I am sure, that you will agree with me if I say that every disease state has a biochemical basis. Don't you? The two major concerns of students and workers in the health sciences are first, the understanding and maintenance of health, and secondly, the understanding and effective treatment of diseases. Biochemistry impacts enormously on both of these fundamental concerns of medicine. As we will see later on in the following slides, the knowledge of biochemistry is important because it impacts profoundly in our search for knowledge in medicine. And naturally, a proper, if not a perfect appreciation of biochemistry and medical knowledge, will eventually lead to a rational basis, and practice of medicine, which will redound to benefit of everyone. There is a reciprocal relationship between biochemistry and medicine, that has stimulated advances in both. We will see in this slide that the search for knowledge in biochemistry and medicine affects the other. This interrelationship of biochemistry and medicine is a wide, two-way street. Biochemical studies have illuminated many aspects of health and disease, and conversely, the study of various aspects of health and disease, has opened up new areas of biochemistry. We can see many examples of this two-way street connecting both biochemistry and medicine. Knowledge of the biochemical molecules shown in the top part of the diagram, has clarified our understanding of the diseases shown in the bottom half. And conversely, analyses of the diseases shown below, have cast light on many areas of biochemistry. The study of nucleic acids has led to a lot of knowledge in the search for cures of many genetic diseases. On the other hand, studying genetic disorders, for example, certain inborn errors of metabolism, has led to a lot of enlightenment on DNA and mutations. Studying lipids such as cholesterol has led many inroads, to the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis and consequently, coronary artery disease. The search for breakthroughs in cardiology, has led not so few discoveries in the study of lipids. And of course, we cannot overestimate the importance of the study of carbohydrates, in leading the way to the diagnosis, management, and prevention of diabetes mellitus. And vice versa, the huge help in studying diabetes mellitus, in helping to understand certain sugars. However, what could probably be the best and classical example of the interrelationship of biochemistry and medicine is the study of proteins vis-a-vis -vis sickle cell anemia. We will be exploring this interesting interrelationship in the next slide. How can biochemistry impact on health and disease? Let's look at a classical example. Sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is a group of disorders that affects hemoglobin, the molecule in red blood cells, that delivers oxygen to cells throughout the body. People with this disease have atypical hemoglobin molecules called hemoglobin S, which can distort red blood cells into a sickle, or crescent, shape. The signs and symptoms of sickle cell disease are caused by the sickling of red blood cells. When red blood cells sickle, they break down prematurely, which can lead to anemia. Additionally, sickled red blood cells, which are stiff and inflexible, can get stuck in small blood vessels. These episodes deprive highly vascularized tissues and organs, such as the lungs, kidneys, spleen, and brain, of oxygen-rich blood, and can lead to organ necrosis and damage. What causes sickle cell disease? Mutations in the HBB gene cause sickle cell disease. The HBB gene codes for the beta hemoglobin. Hemoglobin consists of four protein subunits, typically, two subunits called alpha globin and two subunits called beta globin. The HBB gene provides instructions for making beta globin. In people with sickle cell disease, at least one of the beta globin subunits in hemoglobin is replaced with hemoglobin S. In sickle cell disease, hemoglobin S replaces both beta globin subunits in hemoglobin. Going deeper, hemoglobin S results when glutamic acid, the amino acid located in the sixth position of the beta hemoglobin, is replaced by a different amino acid valine. Later you will learn that glutamic acid and valine are amino acids that are markedly different in structure, property, and function. What causes the mutation, of this unfortunate, amino acid replacement then? The mutation stems when a simple nucleic acid base, is substituted by another, during DNA replication. A mere base substitution leads to an amino acid replacement, resulting in an abnormal gene that will code for sickle hemoglobin instead of normal adult hemoglobin. And with this simple base substitution results in potentially catastrophic events like severe anemia and permanent organ damage. From here we can see, that the structure and function of biomolecules impact profoundly on health and disease. We believe that most, if not all, diseases are just manifestations of abnormalities of molecules, chemical reactions, or biochemical processes. 
The major factors responsible for causing diseases in humans are listed in the table shown here. You can just browse through it to see the point that each and every disease does have a molecular basis. All of them affect one or more critical chemical reactions or molecules in the body. It is almost, if not, impossible to think of any disease entity or pathology that does not involve any biochemical aberration. Can you think of one? This is the roadmap to your biochemistry journey this year. This seems daunting and looks more like the map of a haphazard Metro Manila than anything else. So guys, take a deep breath, and take everything in. Don't worry, I am just joking. It is always better to break down complicated matters into smaller, more manageable, parts. Is this schematic diagram much better? This is a much simplified roadmap. But still, this seems daunting and looks more like a city map than anything else. But I am sure to some of you, some of the rotundas and boulevards here are familiar. You can clearly see here this roundabout near the center, which represents the citric acid cycle, and this boulevard here that feeds into it is the glycolytic pathway. And in this bottom area, what seems like a spiral going to nowhere is the beta oxidation of fatty acids. As you can see, the different components, or metabolic pathways, are represented in blocks or modules. This is how we're going to attack the myriad and complicated world of medical biochemistry. We are going to take biochemistry in manageable morsels, one by one, in an organized and methodological manner, so that, hopefully, no one will be left behind. But still, if we're going to look at it, biochemistry and metabolism, in specific, can still be simplified and will just basically boil down to this. Basically, the overall roadmap of biochemistry just involves generally two directions. The first is the breakdown of highly organized, complex, energy-dense substances like carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. They are broken down into smaller, simple molecules like water, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. This process basically is energy-producing or exergonic, and is called catabolic. This process involves oxidation, or the loss of electrons from molecules. The energy produced is basically in the form of reducing equivalents like NADH and NADPH, and the high energy containing molecule, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. This chemical energy produced from the breakdown of nutrients is now used to synthesize cell macromolecules from simple, monomeric precursor molecules like monosaccharides, amino acids, fatty acids, and nitrogenous bases into carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids, respectively. This process is energy requiring or endergonic and is termed anabolic. This is likewise reductive, meaning involving the addition of electrons into substances. Briefly stated, all organic molecules are synthesized from, and are broken down into the same set of simple compounds, the simple sugars, fatty acids, amino acids and nucleotides. Both their synthesis and their breakdown occur through sequences of chemical changes, that are limited in scope and follow definite rules. As a consequence, the compounds in a cell are chemically related and most can be classified into a small number of distinct families. These are then polymerized to constitute the larger, more complicated macromolecules like the polysaccharides, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids, exemplified by DNA and RNA. The major functions of these biomolecules, which I am sure we are all familiar with, are enumerated in the last column of the table shown here. This table shows the major biomolecules, the building blocks for each and their major functions. Feel free to pause the presentation to read through the different items shown here. Now I guess, we are all ready to jump into the meat of the matter and dive directly into the chemical components of the cell. This concludes the Biochem Serie episode of the lecture on Introduction to Biochemistry and the Biochemistry of the Cell. Feel free to watch the other Biochem Serie episodes of this lecture as linked below in the description.